Hello everyone, welcome to Data Track. Today we are going to build a full fledged installable Python CLI which will download free PDFs from pdftribe.com. This demonstration is going to be hands on, so please stick around till the end and I can assure you that you will learn how to scrape web, how to process files in Python, how to build CLIs and make them installable using Python. In this demonstration, we will use Python's request library to connect and query website endpoints or website URL. And we will use beautiful soup4 library to scrape the site for processing the tags in DOM objects. And then we will use Python's click library to convert our program into a CLI and push the code onto GitHub. And in the end, we will make a Python installable package using our code from GitHub. So enough talking, let's get right into the coding. Okay, uh, let's explore the site that we are going to use as part of our utility. So this is pdftribe.com. As we can see, we have many PDFs available to download. All of these are free to download. Few of them are uh, available as paid copies on amazon.com or other sites, but here you get everything as free. So let's just explore this site before we start building our utility to get better understanding on how the HTML is structured in this website. So uh, anyone who comes onto this website will first search for the book of their choice. So let's search something. Let's say we want to search a book called X and we get these results returned to us. And uh, if we notice the query URL, right, we can see that the URL has the query tag with the keyword that we passed in the search bar. If we pass something else, then the query keyword should change. If you can see the Y has changed now. So this is the first key that we can take from this website. Whenever we search something, the URL is being redirected to this with query containing the keyword that we pass in the search bar. Now with the search being in place, so let's go to the next step. So these are the results that we got from our keyword Y. If we click on the any of the PDF, we should see it will redirect us to a different page which has the book name. The first element in this HTML page is a, a container which has the download page and preview page. And if we hover on the download button at the bottom left corner, we can see that it has the book name ending with the unique identifier. We can see that D188677 something dot HTML. The same is being uh, returned in the HTML URL also. So yeah, this is the second queue that we need to take. Whenever we click on a book, it is being redirected to a book followed by the unique ID dot HTML. So the, now let's see what happens when we click on the download button. So once we click on the download button, the page is being redirected to one more HTML. And this is actually checking the file health and it is checking the browser session and cache and everything that we'll explore as we go further. Here we can see that the download PDF button has been popped up one more time. And if we see the uh, URL at the bottom left corner, we can see that the PDF ID is being embedded to the URL followed by the cache. And uh, the URL remains the same. We just have the different uh, redirect that happen that is happening. If we notice at the bottom left corner again, we can see that the ID and the cache is being passed. So if we click on this button, this will download the file, but we don't want to do that. We want to programmatically download any file from this website using Python and its awesome libraries. So let's see how we can do that. So let's just go back to the page one. This time let's search for a targeted keyword. Let's say we want to search a book called Kubernetes in action. All right. Let's see what this returns. Yeah, we have the book here and we can see the queries tagged in the URL also. So if we are to inspect this element, let's see what will be what we what we'll find out. Let's see what is there in this tag. So as we can see, once we search for any PDF, this is being returned in a container div container. And we can see that this book has a anchor tag that has a redirection URL Kubernetes in action. This is the book name followed by a unique identifier dot HTML. This is the page that we will be redirected to. If I, uh, yeah, so this is the first thing that we, we are going to export from this HTML content. 
and let's click on the HTML uh, let's click on the book now and see where it takes us so if you see we came to the download page and uh, yeah in the download page this is not so useful so let's right click on the download button and see what the download button has to present to us so if we can see the download button also have the same information it has an anchor tag with the file name followed by the unique identifier but above that if we see there is a button field which contains uh, uh, which contains the data ID and the cache of this session if we see we can see the session information here in this tag and we have the download button that will redirect us to the same page again but with the cache and ID is being picked up from this tags here so let's click on the download button and let's go to the actual page where we can download the PDF and we have the third page here loading up and uh, we will get download button one more time so if we right click on the download button and we, if we inspect this we can see this app an anchor tag with the URL state uh, and uh, containing the ID and the session information so this is what we want to export at the end of the utility and we want to use this URL to download the PDF of our choice from the search that we pass to this utility so let's see how we can do it in Python. So yeah, here I'm in my IDE. I have created a folder called PDF underscore CLI and I have opened that folder from my Visual Studio code. So before I do anything, I want to uh, like get the virtual environment set up in my IDE to install any packages or make or set up any environment variables. To do that, let's first call Python to run our virtual environment sorry to set up our virtual environment this shouldn't take time it should be done within 10 seconds I guess it's almost done all right so we have our virtual environment in place so let me create a simple file called main.py which will hold our utility yeah we have a file here so before we do anything uh, we need to connect to the website to query the endpoint or to query the URL in order to get the HTML content. To do that, we need a Python library, the most famous one so far, and I know after URL lib is requests. So we are going to import this library. As we can see, we have a warning here. This is because we haven't installed this requests in our uh, workspace or in our environment that we are developing. So let me install this request library through Python. But before doing that, let me activate my virtual environment so that everything I install will be contained inside that virtual environment. So to activate my virtual environment, there is a file that is residing inside this virtual environment under scripts, which is called activate. So let's run this to make sure that the environment is up and running. Let's navigate to that path and run the activate file. So now post running this file we can see we are in the virtual environment here we can install anything we want this will not impact our local system or local configurations this is a great way to develop uh, things locally and test test them out so let's install the request library pip install my bad pip install requests so i have already installed this library before so that is why the Python is using cached version of it to install and as we can see the warning is gone now and we can get the pretty decent documentation of this library here inside the IDE. So, yeah so with our request library in place let's try to query the endpoint that we want to connect to so let's call it let's assign it to a variable called book so this should be request.get so we are getting the endpoint so that we can query the information that the endpoint returns to us so this is going to be the endpoint from the browser so let's go to the main page let's do a simple search to get the actual endpoint so this is the overall endpoint that we are planning to pass to the request library get method so let me pass that and uh, this is yeah let's let's leave it this like this for now so let's call this and see what's gonna happen 
let me just print out the response in the text format rather than the JSON or just a status code so that we know that we are getting the response properly and I'm gonna print this out and let me put this in a main function so that we can run this name main right all right let's put this inside the main function and we will try running this let's see what happens yep we got the response the entire html content has been returned to us through this library and from this endpoint and let's see what we can do using this written html content and how we can query it and how we can process it to proceed further and get our use case running and uh, developed so for reusability and uh, a best like a part of a best practice let me wrap this into a function called download and we will move the logic into the method and uh, let's try to like structure this function in such a way that whenever we pass a book name right this should take that book name and pass it to the query and it should return the response so we can simply embed the book name into the query using the python's format option and whenever we pass this right it should actually uh, return the book name that we pass so let's remove this from within the function from within the main and let's cut the indentation so let's call this function and I want to call some book name called yeah let's call the same book kubernetes in action all right let's run this again this time the response should be specific to kubernetes in action let's see if we can find that inside the response that we got i can see kubernetes here and there but i want to make sure that we got correct book in return so yeah the first return will be the actual book from the search so we need to go to the top and we need to come down to get the book let's see where is the first response here and it should be yes we got the response correctly so if we can see kubernetes in action is the book and this is the unique identifier we can pass any other book but yeah for the time constraints i'll just leave it this and uh, as we can see file left is the class name that is being associated with the book names and file right is the yeah file left and file right both have but file left have the id and uh, the url or the anchor tag so we will query for the file left tag inside this html content and we'll try to get it out from the html overall using a library called beautiful soup 4 from bs4 import beautiful soup again this library is not installed so we need to install it within our virtual environment let's install that let me run this it will be quick because I have already done this before and it's gonna use the cache so we have the import successful and the warning is gone now so the next step would be to use beautiful soup for library to like process the response that we get from the request library and which is being assigned to the book variable and we will use this library to extract or slice the elements that we want from this response and use it for our further processing steps so before doing anything let me remove this print statement to avoid our terminal from being bombarded with the html content and all so let's declare the beautiful soup 4 beautiful soup 4 and let's pass in the response that we got from the request so let's say book dot text which is the actual html content and we will pass a utility to 
query or parse this HTML response that we get in the text format. So let's use LXML, which is a feature rich library of Python, which is heavily used to process HTML content. So I think we don't have LXML in our virtual environment. Let's install that. LXML, I have installed this already. So this is going to be quick using the cached version. So let's assign this to a variable called soup for reusability. So now uh, let's try to, uh, so the main target or the main goal for the first page was to get the uh, file left class from this HTML content. To do that, let's try to get that. So let's call this simply file ID where we can call soup dot soup have a find all function. So soup is basically the beautiful soup for method that we are assigning to a variable. So this have find all function that will find all the elements which are of div tag that contains class uh, with the name file left. So let's try to print this file ID and see what we get. So let me run this. If this runs successfully, then we should get proper response from the tab classes file underscore not underscore my bad file hyphen left. All right, we have all the information returned here. And if we can notice closely, all of this is being appended to a list. So the first element contains the information for the book that we want. And the second information is the related element from the keyword that we passed. We are not interested in the second element. So let's get only the first element and let's see if we can get that. So it should be file ID of first element would be zero, right? In a list. So let's slice that and see if we get the first element. We have the first element. We were able to export it successfully. And if we can see, we have the data ID here and the URL that we will be redirected to also here in place. So with that in place, let's try to get this URL, complete URL first out of this. So for that, we can simply add, uh, we can add find method of the ID here, which will find all the anchor tags and inside the anchor tag, we need href to come out of this anchor tag. Let's print this and see. Yeah, we have the URL here that we want. So let's assign this to a variable again for reusability. Let's call this file info. So this is the URL that we will be redirected to in the second page whenever we click on any URL. So if we see Kubernetes in action. So this is the first response and if we click this is the URL that we will be redirected to. So now what we should do is we need to get the information from this URL. We need to get the entire HTML of this page to process and go along. So to do that, let's follow the same steps. So let's call this the download link where we have the download button. Let's call requests.get and let's pass this URL. But instead of the endpoint that we have, we will be passing this dynamically whenever we call this. Sorry, my bad, it's requests. So we are going to pass the file info to pass the URL dynamically through this book name as this process proceeds. So let's see what this download link has to return to us. Mm, let's print a text of download link. Text, let's go with download link text. This should give us the second page information, complete HTML content. Yeah, we have the HTML content of the second page where we have the download buttons and stuff. Let's see if we have it. So this is the class 
ebook hyphen buttons in which we have the data id and the session information that will be used in the page 3 and this is the book url that we just got redirected to so let's try to export as much as information from this response as we can using the same method that we followed above so let me remove this to avoid noise so let's call this session soup for the lack of a better name beautiful soup let's pass in download link dot text as our html content and again lxml as our parser so with that let's go to let's try to export the information let's call this session info so let's use the session soup and the method called again find all this time we are going to search again class div but the class name differs now the class will be ebooks so this is the class in which the information resides which is ebook hyphen buttons so let's print the session info to see if we are getting the correct response and we are slicing the desired result that we want it should have a list yeah this uh, all the responses are appended to a list so we have very few responses based on the class tag that we are passing so let's get the first information like first element of this list and we should see clearly what we are getting in response so this have quite a lot of information but it has the information that we need so to process further we need to actually query this information or slices based on the button tag so button tag have the information that we need the session info and the id that we need is inside the button tag so let's use button uh, function or let's find for button inside this and we will query for the information through that it's inside the button and we need to go to inside the button we have data preview this data preview have the id and the session information both embedded so let's use data hyphen preview data preview so let's see what response we get now so we have this entire uh, response so this have the id and the session so let's only take the session from this let's try to split it let's try to split it to the right based on a simple text that matches whatever matches this text should be split into two so for our query it will split until here as one element of the list and this session id as the second element of the list so second element in the list is always uh, indexed at one so let's try slicing that list to one and we should have the session id here so let's assign this again to a variable called let's use y For the lack of better variable name so now we have our uh, session uh, id so now let's get the actual unique id from the response that we get so let's see what the session info has to offer let's try to export that let's export till here and let's see what we get So we need to get only the unique identifier the id till here so let's try to split this based on equals to sign and see what we get yeah we have the elements and this is at the first element so let's get the first element and again let's split this based on ampersand symbol and the uh, id post split will be at position 0 
so let's call this one last time and see if we get the session info yeah we have the id here so let's assign this to a variable x now so we have our x and we have our y this is the id and this is the session information what did i do okay so now we have the variables that we are planning to pass to our third page where it accepts the id and the session information but before we do that let's determine how we want to name our files once we download them using this utility so we can actually export the file name that we are passing and we actually will receive the file name in the response right we can simply use that file name and append .pdf at the end of the file name and save it locally or wherever we wish so to do that let's try to get the file name so the file name should be we want the file name to be the same file response that we get so let's say we have this file info let's see what I forgot what was the information that was embedded in the file info let's see what we have that embedded so in the file info we have these things so let's try to use regular expression to remove this uh, unique identifier HTML and slash from this file name and let's only have the file name and we'll append .pdf at the end this is very simple we can use python's regular expression library and we can pass uh, simply split method we can split this uh, string based on uh, we are going to split the string which is file information this is the file info variable which is a string actually so we are going to split it based on hyphen so after every hyphen it is going to be split and we are making sure that after hyphen we have a letter and like as we can see with every unique identifier it starts with a letter or character and we want to export or uh, get that out of the string based on this regular expression and we are going to pass file info as our input so let's try to print this file name and see what we get uh, we are having warning for regular expression let's import regular expression library as well so now if we print this we should see the i want to only get the first element right i want to take the first element out of this zero and i got kubernetes in action so this is a string now so i can split this based on the slash and the slash and kubernetes should be separated now we have it separated let me take the first element and this should be our file and we have the file and let me just append the string dot pdf at the end of this so that we have a file which is pdf once we download it locally yeah we have the file name here so that's that's good right so we have the file name that whatever we pass as the book name should be the file name in the end so yeah with our file name with our id and with our session information in place let's head to our third page where we can actually download the pdf file so let's click on the download button and let's wait for the download actual download button to load and we will inspect it and we'll get the url and we'll pass the variables that we have stored locally to that variable dynamically and we'll try to download this file so that might sound complicated but it's pretty straightforward let's get this let's copy this element let's go back to our IDE and I'll just open a new file and let me get this URL so this is the endpoint from which we can download the file actually so let's call this one last time let's call the request library one last time request.get and pass it should start with the pdf write.com followed by this URL 
but we don't want to pass the ID or the session information we will pass them dynamically during the call so let's format them using X and Y so this should do so let's try to get PDF dot status code let's see if this return success or failure I'm gonna print this and I'm pretty sure it should return success status code yeah we have success status code 200 so now it's time to actually use this return content and write it to a PDF file to do that we can simply open any file using Python's with open function and we want the file name to be the file name variable that we derived earlier and we want to write this write the content to the file as bytes so now uh, let's call this as f so now it's time to f dot write and we need to just call pdf dot content to write the pdf content into this file and close the file in the end so if we run this we should have the file with the file name yes we have the file name pdf in our local directory and our utility is running successfully so now it's time to convert this utility into a cli and package it into a pip installable file and post it online so that anyone can use this utility locally and download pdfs from this website easily so i have made little changes and i've made this utility a little more uh, appealing i have added a simple function which i got from stack overflow to make sure that whenever we're downloading a pdf file it should show the progress on how much it downloaded and where it is stuck so i have added this simple uh, logic here which i got from stack overflow i have not developed this this is an again is not out of the box and one thing is i have actually copied this element from the html directly so i have got this uh, weird symbol names so we need to remove this ampersand and colon from the url to download the file and if we run this now we should see see the information here and the progress and everything that is presented on the terminal yes as we can see i've added simple texts to share, like highlight what is happening and where is the program currently at and it downloads the file and as we can see this has the progress bar and once it is downloaded successfully it displays that it has downloaded successfully and if we were to see this file in our local explorer this should be opening the file as is which if we have downloaded this from the browser directly this is actual pdf file and we can go to any you know, page or any appendix and we can read so now it's time to convert this utility into a cli to do that we will be using this, uh, an awesome library python's library which is called click which makes uh, cli can creation so easy so i'm gonna install the click library inside our virtual environment So this again shouldn't take time and we have the click library installed. All we have to do to make this function a uh, command line interface com flag is simply called click dot command to convert this into a command and we have to pass one more click argument which is click dot option and we need to pass the flag name that this CLI should accept we'll call the same flag name that we want to pass which is book name and we can pass a help function to help uh, users or end users to understand what this flag is to so this is to download or we can say file name that you want to download so this is all it takes to convert this function into a command line utility and if I am to call this function let's run this main function and let's call the book name 
which is Kubernetes in action. Let me delete this file before I re-download it. And this should accept this Kubernetes in action parameter and it should. Okay, my bad. We are passing the book name here as well. So let's remove this. If we remove that, this should run. Uh, what extra argument we got? Okay, let's put this inside the quotes. And this should run successfully. Yes, CLI is working as expected finally. So it's about time we convert this into a pip installable package. Let's do that. I have uh, pushed the code onto GitHub and I made a clone of this repository onto my local to make this into a Python installable package. So now the next step is to make this entire utility into a Python installable, installable package, which will act as a CLI. So to do that, we need to have a setup.py file to make any Python program into an installable module. So this Python installable setup.py file will accept a standard library. So Python generally offers a standard library that is called setup tools, which have a method called setup. So let's import that. Yeah, we have the setup method in place now so let's declare our setup how we want this python package to be configured or how it has to be initiated when we try to run or install the package on our local so let's name this uh, installable let's say downloader for the lack of a better name and let's version this we want this to be at the initial version 0.0.1 you can give the numbering as per your convenience uh, we have to pass the github url where we have pasted uh, like where we are we're hosting the github code so this is the github url where i have my entire code base hosted on so i'm passing that after that you need to pass the author name so i'm gonna pass my name this is just for the identity and you can pass author email also if you want to or you can totally skip this and the next step would be we have to ensure that the packages that we require are being installed as part of this uh, pip package right so when we try to install this utility it it actually should have all the dependency files in place in the system before it even start installing itself so to do that we need to restrict the system to install the dependencies before it start installing the package so we can simply put as install requires install requires so this is a again a parameter that we can pass here to ensure that the packages that we require are being installed before the actual pip installation takes place so these are the packages that we need in order to install our uh, cli locally so this is in place and the next step would be to pass the entry point so this entry point is the file that should run when the installable package is installed so this entry point will be our so we can so this there is a, a additional flag that we have to pass which is console underscore script so this will accept the file that we want to run so here we have to pass the name of the CLI flag that it should accept. So our uh, package name is downloader. So this will accept the file. We have our file name which is main. And our function is downloader again. If we go to the function, this is the main function and this is our function definition, right? We have to pass the file name followed by the function name and yeah that's pretty much it so now let's try to build this package and see if we can build it locally to do this we can simply call python hyphen m build so this will create a local virtual environment for this package it will take a little bit of time
Oh my bad, I've missed the comma here. Let me rerun this. Now it should run without any errors and it should create a wheel file here inside the dist directory. It will create a directory called dist and it will place a wheel file inside that. Using that wheel file we can install the CLI locally and we can use it pretty much like a command line utility. So it's it's gonna be done now. Yeah, so we have our wheel file and the tarball which is inside our dist folder if you can see this is a wheel file which we need to use to make this uh, library install locally so i can simply say pip install my wheel file which is in the dist library if i just run this it should install the package so it has installed the library for us so now what we can do is we can call the function name we can simply say downloader help this will give us the flags that the downloader pass if you notice we are not passing any python space the file name followed by the flag and stuff we can simply call the downloader which is the name of our utility followed by the flags so our downloader will accept the book name right so let's pass book name followed by the book we want to download again it is kubernetes in action kubernetes in action Uh, oh my bad underscore it is book name kubernetes in action so it should do the job for us and it should download the file so it is fetching the session and we should see the file any moment now come on come on yeah we have the file here I uh, think I gave the wrong name kubernetes in action I gave the wrong name and I think that's why we got a different file here kubernetes Netis in action this shouldn't take time yeah it actually found the file and it's passing the session information and it will be passed to the third page and we will have our PDF downloaded quick yeah we have our file downloaded and if we can see it in explorer then we should have the actual kubernetes in action file we actually did it now we have a installable package which you can host anywhere you want and you can build amazing tools with your expertise and you can host them by following the same process all you have to do is follow the official documentation and host your uh, repositories for the greater audience and the community to make and take advantage of your work and that's about it guys thanks for sticking around till the end and keep rocking please do subscribe if you like this video and give a thumbs up thank you again